Hey guys, this is Attorney Walter now with Disability Resolution PA. Please let me know if you can hear me. We were having some mic issues. We were having some camera issues, all around issues, but we are now live. Let me go ahead and pull this thing a little bit closer. There we go. Get this out of the uh, light screen there. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So let's go ahead and begin. This is a video specifically on the topic of President Biden's promises to the people with disabilities. Okay. Specifically what I went and found, uh, I went to this one website. It's called specialneedsanswers.com. They created an article, which I thought was awesome. Excellent, excellent. If you guys can hear me, let me know. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and talk specifically about what this is. All right. This is an article that talks about what the promises were that were created by President Biden while he was running for office. I did a much bigger video back in the day about this, but I'm hoping this article will go ahead and summarize it so that you guys have a better understanding as to what the president uh, actually promised. Excellent, guys. You guys can hear me. Awesome. We had some mic issues. I also had some poison ivy issues. Um, but we got through it. We got through it. Unfortunately, a nurse and a doctor both told me after reviewing it that I should immediately go to the hospital. I have agreed to do that, although that was two days ago. So, you know, we're working on that. All right, here we go. Specifically, specialneedsandanswers.com by Andy Jones, November 25th, 2020. That's when the article was created. Here we go. President-elect Joe Biden has made more promises to the disability community than perhaps any incoming president in U.S. history. Raising the hopes of advocates. The former vice presidents, and you know, the funny thing is, the funny thing is what he got as a result of this was a bunch of YouTube channels that keep lying about deadlines of when things are going to come out for benefits. And then Fox News reported on YouTube being filled with channels that lied to the disabled, which is at least the highest level of sin you could imagine on YouTube. It's a, at least, it's, it's in that category. The former vice president's proposals range from strengthening enforcement against disability discrimination to nearly doubling the supplemental security income SSI monthly benefit. Just to clarify, that's doubling the average monthly benefit. The total monthly monthly benefit is 794. You multiply that by two, you get a bigger number. Faith Moore, thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you. She donated 299, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, the Biden-Harris campaign laid out an ambitious plan to meet the needs of Americans with disabilities, and it is our sincere hope to see that plan carried out and fully implemented, the National Disability Rights Network said in a news release. Okay? I sir, I got all frothed up about it. I was super excited. Oof, poison Ivy. I was super excited about basically all these promises, because, because literally, I don't know who wrote it. You know, some, President Biden didn't write it. But somebody wrote out all these brilliant ways to fix the disability system. I was super excited. I was incredibly excited. In May 2020, then candidate Biden released a comprehensive disability rights plan encompassing civil rights and inclusion, health care, employment opportunities, economic security, education, affordable housing, transportation, and technology, and global disability rights. Global disability rights. Just for a moment, just for a moment. And I know how you guys feel about, you know, what's going on with the immigration situation right now, but that's not a terrible thing. Increasing the human rights for disabled people around the world. And I don't know what that, I don't even, I haven't thought about how I would approach that. I started to think about like, okay, what if there was a space station or people living on a colony on Mars? How would we take care of somebody who became injured and who's disabled there and couldn't get back to earth? That's the same theme. It's interesting because if you increase the bar for disabled rights in a couple places, it'll start to catch on in other places. And that's important. We want that. That's a good thing. Some of the proposals can be realized upon taking office, while others will require congressional action. In regard to actions that can be done on his own, Biden has promised to appoint a White House Director of Disability Policy. He planned, which is a smart idea. The guys, support that. That's a smart idea. That's a good idea. He plans, uh, he plans to implement a long-standing proposal to make it easier for people with disabilities to stay independent in their community and to roll back President Trump's public charge rule, which made it harder for immigrants with disabilities to obtain work permits. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read a quick thing here. See, T from in South, highly allergic to poison. Anything I found better than works pretty good. Um, I should try that. I've tried all the poison ivy medicines at this point. Um, something popped on me uh, a couple hours ago. So I'm not even, I'm, I, you know what I mean? I'm at this point where I'm just like, I'm probably just going to go to the hospital and say, fix me, you know, just fix it. So um, let's see. President-elect Biden has also promised to direct his Department of Justice and other federal agencies to reinvigorate enforcement of the Americans with Disability Act and other civil rights laws. Think about that. 
modifying, updating the ADA. It's been a while. It's a good point. It needs to be updated. Okay, shifting Medicaid funding away from institutional to integrated services will be restored as an overarching goal, reasserting affirmative action obligations to people with disabilities, protecting special education students in school discipline hearings, and expanding voting rights are all among the new administration's goals. In terms of actions that would require legislation from Congress, President-elect Biden has called for a range of changes to Social Security disability benefits. Specifically, he wants to tie the SSI benefit rate to 125% of the federal poverty line. Now, real quick, that's higher than the promises of the Supplemental Security Restoration Act, Sup Supplemental Security Income Restoration Act. So Supplemental Security Income Restoration Act wants to boost it to 100% of the poverty line. Well, he wants to boost it to 125% of the poverty line. And then I'll go through what's going on currently in, in all those explanations as well, because then we're going to go into the 2022 budget, because that's at the end of the day, that's where, you know, the real things happen. How do you pay for this new disability director that's going to be overseeing disability policy? How do you, you know what I mean? When the money is applied, that's when we know that he's serious. Okay. Uh, let's see, which would effectively raise the average monthly benefit for an individual from 780. It's actually 793, $94 per month to about just over $1,300 per month which to me makes sense, like for an SSI person, because you can't rent a place for $500, $600 anymore in Florida. Maybe, 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 maybe in the really, really small towns and stuff like that in a trailer, but you can't even rent a place like that at most mobile home parks in Central Florida right now. I don't know what it's like where you're from, but you know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's possible. And I see people calling. I'm just going to get through this real quick and then I'll pick up the calls. All right, next page. For Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI benefits, President-elect Biden has called for, among other things, ending two burdensome waiting periods, a five-month wait uh, between when recipients are approved for the program and when they begin receiving benefits. That's that whole SSDI waiting period. The first five months don't count for retroact or for uh, your back pay slash retroactive benefits, and the month that you're found disabled doesn't count. He wants to get rid of those five-month waiting periods, or wait five-month waiting period. Um, all right, let's keep reading. Uh, da, 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 da. and uh, a two-year wait until recipients are Medicare eligible. So he wants to get rid of that whole 12-month Medicare wait or 24-month me Medicare waiting period. That's where you basically get found disabled. And if your alleged onset date is like two years back, then you're cool. Then, you, then you're cool. You can go ahead and get your Medicare. But if you're found disabled like seven months ago, you have to wait the difference in months between that seven months and those two years. All right. Biden would raise payroll taxes on people with incomes of more than $400,000 and change the way annual Social Security increases are calculated by using a new measurement known as the CPI-E. We all know that. We use the CPI-W right now. He wants to switch it to essentially the retired. He wants to switch it to essentially the retired version of that calculation of how elderly people spend money. And then your cost of living adjustment, your COLA, would go up each month a little bit more. On the campaign trail, Biden bailed. A $775 billion plan to assist family caregivers. That's that's almost a trillion dollars to spend on family caregivers who can take care of their disabled family members. You're not just paying the disabled, you're paying somebody in the family to help them. Families are squeezed emotionally and financially, Biden said at the time. They need help, but too often they can't afford it. And the professional caregivers out there, the home health care, uh, care workers, child care workers, are too often underpaid, un unseen and undervalued, and for many families, he didn't put this in there, are too expensive. Just, unless there's some insurance company that's going to pay for them, they're too expensive. President-elect Biden has also called on Congress to abolish sub-minimum wages. Nationwide, more than 400,000 people with disabilities are legally paid wages less than the federal minimum wage. As part of the Department of Labor program that awards certificates to employers to hire people deemed otherwise unemployable in the competitive market, civil rights groups have long characterized the New Deal era program as exploiting the disabled. Well, I guess there's more to it. I didn't click here. I didn't hit the click here button. But bottom line is that gives you a basic understanding. He's promising more than the SSI Restoration Act. And he's promising the taxation and a lot of the things, the bullet points in the Social Security 2100 Act. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to the next article over here. All right. Biden proposal could be the answer to Social Security disability benefit woes. 
pandemic has had devastating impact on SSDI applicants. This is from rollcall.com. Jim Alsop posted uh, June 29, 2021. Uh, the announcement that President Joe Biden's fiscal 2022 budget proposal would provide a 9.7% increase or $1.3 billion in funding to the Social Security Administration is certainly a promising step toward a return to post-pandemic normalcy. So what's happening is 2022 is trying to boost the Social Security Administration. They need more people. They, there's so many people applying for disability benefits right now. There's never been waiting periods for Social Security disability benefits like there are right now. Okay, let's keep rolling through this. Like many government agencies, the SSA closed the bulk of its field offices to protect the health of employees and customers during COVID-19. Uh, but the ripple effect for those applying for Social Security Disability Insurance or SSDI has been devastating. Amid the pandemic, the backlog of pending disability applications awaiting a decision rose by 30% from 593 1,944 in 2019, uh, 2019 to 763,747 last year in 2022. And it's even higher now. The processing times for applications increased by 11 days. They're even higher now. Meaning the average application took 131 days for the SSA to process it for disability benefits. These delays have tangible consequences from missed mortgage payments to increased rates of depression, which is why an increase in SSA funding could be a life-saving measure for millions of Americans with disabilities. The SSDI application backlog was a problem even before the pandemic, but wait times have increased dramatically since it began. Without extra funding to help alleviate the burden, the lives of millions will remain at stake. Over the last decade, 110,000 Americans have died while waiting to receive a determination on their disability benefits. Existing applications are not the only problem the SSA faces in the coming months. According to a 2020 Italian study, 87.4% of individuals who recovered from COVID-19 had at least one lingering long-term symptom, such as fatigue, reduced lung capacity, or heart damage. These findings indicate that initial SSDI claims will continue to increase as more individuals are diagnosed with long-term disabilities as a result of COVID-19. That's why we did the video on long COVID. They call it long COVID as a potential for future individuals who will be getting a disability benefits. Okay. These findings indicate that initial SSDI claims will continue to increase as more individuals are diagnosed with long-term disability COVID-19 cases. As those cases reach the hearing level, wait times are likely to increase even more than they did over the course of this last year. Okay, next thing. Wait a minute, that doesn't seem to match up here. Uh, let's see, four, and then we got uh, three. Okay, okay, here we go. The length, the impact of lengthy wait times on individuals with disabilities is long ranging from the financial implications to the emotional distress of being out of work and without an income. An all-sub customer survey found that 40% of individuals waiting on SSDI benefits have had to borrow money from friends or family to make ends meet, while more than one in four have missed credit card or loan payments. Others have suffered from the physical toll of this lengthy process, with 40% reporting that their primary illness worsened and nearly two-thirds struggling with anxiety or depression. You know what is interesting about this? If, if everything's really that bad, why didn't they come out with all these benefits for companies to open up a lot of their positions with at-home work-oriented procedures, you know, getting laptops to their employees so that they could use them at home, getting special phone systems set for their employees so they could use them at home. You know, we didn't see a lot of that, you know, information set up to go ahead and inspire companies to make more of their employees work from home. I know a lot of law firms that are now going to be pretty, they, they own offices, they're beautiful, nice big offices, but they're not going back to them. They'll meet people there if they need to meet people there. Otherwise, they're not going back to them. I know other law firms that, you know, like you know, the month after the government said, you know, it was acceptable. They said, you get back to that office and you work. We expect more clients, yada, 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 you know. Okay, so here we go. Americans who report some type of disability or chronic medical condition make up 25% of our country's adult population and are considered by some of the largest minority group. While only a small number of these individuals have a condition so severe that they meet SSDI's stringent eligibility requirements, many will see their conditions worsen in the near future. At that time, they will expect and deserve an efficient review and access to the insurance benefits they paid for when they were working. 
They deserve the consideration and respect of our lawmakers to address the challenges they face and maintain programs and support like SSDI. Congress should approve the proposed increase to Social Security funding, which would help alleviate the increasing SSDI applications backlog and help make significant progress toward undoing the damage wrought by the pandemic. There is no going back to a time before COVID-19, and those with lingering symptoms will likely add to the growing number of Americans filing claims for SSDI because of work disrupting disabilities. Okay. Uh, oh, good. I see. Uh, I see our uh, disability benefits video assistant is here. Very good. She's actually with her son right now, who who got a little bit injured playing uh, basketball. So, uh, be nice to her. Be nice to her. Um, let's keep rolling. Implementing this budget is not enough to solve every problem the SSA faces going forward, but it is a strong step in the right direction and the beginning of a new era for disability awareness and equality. Okay, perfect. So Jim Alsup is the president and CEO of Alsup, a national provider of Social Security and Medicare Disability Claims Services. So that's that giant group that basically pays attorneys to go to hearings for them. Okay. All right. So um, what do you need to know? You need to know this. Uh, the shot of including disability benefits, a benefit increase in 2021 are almost zero. They're almost nil at this point. Uh, a lot of these channels out there make videos uh, a lot of them have now over 200,000, 300,000, a million subscribers. So their little job is just to make videos about the potential of these upcoming benefits. And that's why these other news stations like Fox came out with an article specifically about how they were lying and being disingenuous about the process of what's going on with those benefit increases. Um, here's what you need to know. Uh, yeah. So Nikki Justice on the run, they have passed bill after bill and the SSA got zero. Yeah. That's that's the truth right there. The, the expectation is that at some point they're going to pass something that's going to benefit the SSA, but the SSA keeps getting carved out of these bills as they're written. And it's just, it's it's saddening. And the reason why is that this is something that doesn't add uh, essentially a lot of flash to whatever they're trying to sell as a politician. That's number one. Number two, it's not like they're building something. It's not something new that's exciting. And wow, here we go. But here's the thing, um, just so you know, the email was set up for the future uh, nonprofit that we're going to be doing that specifically shows people who to vote for, senators and uh, house reps, to go ahead and get Social Security retirement, SSDI, SSI bills passed. That's the whole point of it. Uh, I've started to pick out some templates. It's taking me longer because I've been behind. I just got off of vacation. So this whole week I've been all over the place playing catch up. But the bottom line is next week, we're going to be going through the templates on the website. Now, with that said, um, I want to go through something that I need you guys to do. And what I need you guys to do is I need you to find logos out there that I think you that I think would be excellent or good or just awesome that we should go ahead and look at designs and borrow ideas for them, those designs to go ahead and use uh, essentially for uh, this upcoming website. Now, why are we doing this nonprofit, right? What's the, you know, what's the whole idea behind this whole thing? Um, there is an odd situation going on, okay? Um, and what's going on is basically this. Disability as a group, kind of like retirement, but disability as a group has a ton of Democrats and Republicans. And the ironic part about it is that if these Democrats and Republicans just went one way or the other way with their massive, massive voting capabilities, they could pick and choose whichever senators and House reps would vote through essentially those bills, those statutes, those acts that they wanted to benefit the Social Security Administration to have more benefits going their way. So kind of the bottom line here is we are creating a group that is going to solely have the purpose of providing a platform to teach disabled people, you know, essentially how to vote for those people who are going to provide them the best benefits. Why not? Right? Why not? The website, just for your own knowledge base and things like that, uh, and I'm going to put them both in here real quick, um, they're going to be this. These are the ones, this is the website, and then that'll be the email that we open with. We have not decided what the base fundamental color scheme is going to be because we haven't picked out a logo, and the color scheme has to in some way integrate with the logo. It either has to be similar colors or it has to be complementary complementary colors. So you'll see in the chat section that vote to protect disabled.org 
and info at vote to protect disabled.org. That's basically uh, what we're going to be using. Um, all right. So let's talk about this. A lot of channels are promising this identity that there's going to be a benefit increase. I don't think there is. A lot of channels are promising that there's going to be a fourth stimulus. I'm not seeing anything that's going in that direction. I know the Democrats are worried right now because a lot of the senators and things like that and kind of the initial voting options out there for politics have gone Republican. And I know that that is going to pump prime them to want to offer people more benefits, more options, more things like that. So we might see something come out of nowhere. We might. It, it could happen. We don't know if it will, but it could happen. Okay. So I, I guess what I'd like to say to you guys is this. I need you to play the game. What do I mean by play the game? I need you to pick out the politicians that you like in general. And what we're going to do is we're going to target them with information to show them specifically how they could remain in office if the disabled vote their way. And they could essentially be losing their office or be voted in all based upon how the disabled want to vote. And I think what's interesting about this is that you have to keep in mind there are individuals who essentially have a smart idea of what's going on. In order to have disability benefits and retirement benefits, you cannot have pure communism. You cannot have pure socialism. You cannot have pure uh, monopoly-based capitalism. You cannot have you know, traditional pure capitalism. You have to have a socialist democrat capitalist Republic. That's essentially what it comes down to the middle ground. You got to have a lot of people working and those people have to be paying some taxes and those taxes then go to benefit. Obviously those for retirement, SSDI, SSI, DIC, all of those benefits. Now, with that said, if we continue on the track that we are with all the new legislation that's coming out that hinders business, we're not going to have enough people on this end paying into the system for as many uh, people on this end to go ahead and receive benefits. So we have to have a balance here. We have to get people back to work because right now we're plateauing. We're not growing enough. We have to get the prices of doing business down. And that, for example, is uh, things like, you know, the fuel prices, uh, having to buy, you know, envelopes, having to buy paper, having to buy cups, having to buy stuff. We have to get this stuff for businesses cheaper so that the cost of paying taxes isn't so extreme. There's another thing, too, which is that we have to audit the government. At some point, we have to audit the government. You guys, you just get on board with it. Just get used to the idea. We have to audit the government because at some point, we have to know where money is being spent so that we can better understand where the money is flowing. That That's an incredibly incredibly important thing. Yeah. Poison Oak is terrible. I agree. And you can even see like, I, it's just, and it's, that's not even the bad part, but I'm just miserable right now. And I have the camera a little bit higher because of what's going on with it. So yeah. So at some point we have to look into that. Now I will say this, not all of it's so bad. A lot of people want to just throw out the entire system we have. It's terrible. It's horrible. All that. It's not. The systems we have are good structures. The buildings that they are built on are great structures. However, we do need to at some point audit the government. We do need to at some point figure out, get our accountants on the private side of this whole thing, figuring out how money is being used properly, being misused, uh, you know, essentially, and then move forward from there. And I, I don't think the IRS is super evil. A lot of people say that to me that they're super evil. I'm sure that they can be that way if they wanted to to somebody, but. I think that the base fundamental is we need a simpler tax system. We do. I don't understand how it works. I, I, I literally am going to be signing up for a course to go ahead and learn the basics because I did some law CLE stuff on it. And it was all like doctrinal theory and it, it's not useful. I have a basic understanding of the accounting, but then when it comes to the taxes, it changes every year and it's wildly different. We need a simpler tax system. We need a system where people appreciate paying taxes into it to understand the benefits that come from it. And that's incredibly important. We don't have a system right now where people appreciate what their taxes are going towards. We don't have a system right now where people even understand what their taxes are going towards. So that's the big thing. And, and here's the thing. Lose all the loopholes. If we hypertax all the rich, 
It's going to get us some extra money, but that's not the solution in the long run. It'll save us in a little bit. It'll save us for a decade. But the reality is we just keep taxing people more and more and more and more. And that's at all levels, all levels. We just keep taxing them more and more and more and more. And the problem is you, you ultimately get to a point where people are going to just not want to be part of the system. People are going to want to move out of the country, play more you know, games with their taxes, et cetera. That's the reality. That's the tough reality that disabled people and retired people have to face. Some people are into extreme capitalism. That's your Walmarts, Monopolies, your Amazons, all that stuff. Some people are into extreme communism. That's where the government owns everything, you know, and you have to work. And, you know, the people who work, they get the same thing as the people who don't work. That doesn't work. If you want people in America to make great products, innovate stuff, go to space, create new technologies, which benefit us. I mean, who hasn't benefited from MRIs? Who hasn't benefited from, you know, cellular technology? Uh, the study of cells in space is a huge thing or, or the CERN technology of colliding particles, creating new systems and new technologies. For us. I mean, we'll have anti-gravity at some point. Think about how that'll help the disabled. Having somebody who basically can have an anti-gravity machine, allowing them to not have pressure from gravity on their body while they heal. So I guess, yeah, keep our constitutional freedoms. Yeah, we, we have to keep those. That's the base fundamental. Um, I guess what I would say is this, we need to start thinking, we need to start being educated. And I don't just mean you guys, I mean like everybody. The disabled especially have a very small knowledge of financial literacy, which, uh, which has gone unnoticed because the SSI people and some of the SSDI people, they take a vow of poverty when they take the program. They live in poverty as a result of it. And that's sad. That's terrible. And we need to change that. All right, so guys, next week we're going to be looking at templates for the website for the nonprofit. I expect you all to bring essentially a logo that you're particularly interested in the design so that we can look at it. And then I'll show you guys how to upload it to a website to then take it from that website and then basically post it to this little chat area. Okay, so that's the big focus for next time. That's what's going on. All right, now with that said, we're going to be taking a couple of calls. Um, and then we'll basically go from there. Yeah, if you're not sure how to go ahead and do like show the logo on the on the chat session, just email it to wrh at disabilityresolution.com. I'll put it in the thing. Just email it to me and I will then create a folder and I will show you guys uh, on the iPad uh, or just I'll create the link on there, but I'll show you guys on this thing specifically what it looks like. And then we can discuss about the relevance of what the logo should look like because that's the next step here. We'd be going faster with all of this, but the problem is, I went up and did the family farm thing. I got the poison ivy thing and I've been miserable. And I mean, it's literally all over. My neck is swollen right now, even as I talk to you. All right. All right. So here we go. Um, we're going to go through some calls real quick. But before I do calls, are there any questions that you guys have for me going forward that you would like me to answer specifically about Social Security benefits? What's going on with Biden's future for this whole program? All that stuff. Is there anything at all that you want me to go ahead and answer Post it in the chat session. I'm going to start looking at the people who did call uh, early so that I can go ahead and call them back. But just G GXY, wow, thank you. Wow. And oh, GX, I've got to call you, by the way, because I, I, I have the thing that you sent me and it's incredible. I'm going to do a video on it, but I just want to clear with you what's okay and what's not okay to put in the video. But I really, 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 really appreciate I really like that's huge. It's just, it's mind boggling. Um, but I'm gonna, I want to clear with you what's okay I can put in that video. Um, so G, uh, GXY donated $25, uh, and that's just amazing. Uh, but I'm going to call him uh, basically either the weekend or next week to go over those details. Um, you want more details? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Puerto Rico thing. Guys, it's so weird. All right, so we all know Trump wanted to save money, right, with the government and essentially how money was being paid out. Because he's a business guy. He's a 1980s power suit, power tie business guy. That's how he is. That's what he is. You know, he would come out and say crazy things. And everybody would be like, how would he say that? And I'd be sitting there being like, well, he's not a politician. What would you expect? You know, like some of you guys on here are like, Walter, you say you're very down to earth, but I can't believe you said that. I'm an attorney, but I also, you know, I, I hate those starch suits attorneys. I, just, I hate that type of that. You know what I mean? 
And I just don't like it. Like I have to be that person in front of the judges. Sure. But with you guys, we got to find a fix. We got to fix the situation to get you through the program. I don't have to be a, a prim and proper person at all time. It's just not good. Now, with that said, Puerto Rico, he started this. Well, he didn't start a suit. He continued to suit. There was a guy who lived in the U.S., had SSI benefits. And remember, SSDI benefits, totally cool in Puerto Rico. SS, uh, or sorry, SSDI benefits, totally cool in Puerto Rico. SSI benefits, not cool in Puerto Rico. They, they don't have them there. They have a different system there. When they originally did their international agreement, uh, some of the islands above Hawaii were able to get SSI thrown in, were able to get SSDI benefit, all that. So they just negotiated a better deal. But they were a mini economy. They were a very small island. Puerto Rico is not a small island. That is a big island. And when they negotiated and did everything, they did not get SSI benefits in the deal because of how they were paying the taxes back to Puerto Rico for Puerto Rico to go ahead and spend them you know, in Puerto Rico, even though Puerto Rico has a lot of corrupt politicians, they have some really amazing people there too. Even though you'll see the corrupt stuff on TV, they have some actually really great people there that are working on power, sanitation, all that stuff. So kind of the bottom line is this, this person lived in the U S with SSI, moved to Puerto Rico, the government caught on, removed his benefits. And I actually had a case like this with the U S Virgin islands that I'm still working on. And what happened was he went to Puerto Rico and then they took away his benefits and he sued. And now it's going up the federal chain uh, to basically go higher and higher. Now, the incredible thing about it is that the, the way it works is we look at Puerto Rico as almost like a state. It's pretty much a state at this point. It, it pretty much is a state at this point. It's a possession. It gets most benefits that America can give. Uh, all Puerto Ricans are American citizens. It's pretty much a state. It's, it, you know what I mean? Like as far as states, go, it, it's, it's almost there. And more so than the U.S. Virgin Islands. More so than some of the islands north of Hawaii. So Biden supported, prior to becoming president, giving Puerto Rico the capability of distributing SSI benefits. Uh, can someone on SSI have an IRA? Yes, they can, but that's a, there's more to it than that. However, however, the problem is, um, oh, Lori D, is it? It's buffering bad. Um, let me see. My internet's pretty good. I don't know. It just may, might be one of those things where uh, I'm not sure. I shut down some of the security cameras around the house to go ahead and not use as much video. But so here's the thing. Um, Biden, before becoming president, promised that he wanted to promote Puerto Rico getting SSI benefits. And now, because keep in mind, this guy is an American citizen, was in the U.S., then went to Puerto Rico. He could come back to the U.S. and get SSI, SSI benefits. But if he's in Puerto Rico for more than 30 days, they'll take him away and give him an overpayment. So then the question then becomes, why did President Biden go ahead and continue the lawsuit at the federal appellate court level to make sure that people, the, the Puerto Rican people can't actually have SSI benefits. He then released a statement that the lawsuit was not consistent with what his party wants, but that he's going to continue it anyway. I have a theory. I don't know why he is pushing this agenda. Democrats are supposed to be liberals and liberals want to help Americans and they keep giving things to Americans. That's not so much his agenda. His agenda is help immigrants come in and forcefully convince them to like, enjoy, and love the Democratic Party for votes. And the problem inherent with that, uh, that we need immigrants. Like I know you guys uh, say this or that, but we need them. We have to increase our GDP, our gross domestic product production. We have to have more people working and paying taxes. So we got to have immigrants, even if they're illegal immigrants that can become workers and legalize. We got to make them. We have, we have to have more immigrants because we have to have more people to make our GDP keep growing. So the kicker is this. What happens is he will either go forward. Yeah, I'll, I'll call these people real quick. He will either go forward and drop the lawsuit and allow Puerto Rico to have SSI benefits, or let the court system decide whether or not Puerto Rico can have benefits.
But the way it's set right now, if you go look at the original, um, if you go look at the original uh, international agreement that was signed between Puerto Rico and the United States, Puerto Rico can't have SSI because of how they handle their tax structure. Like they pay their tax money into the U.S. and then it comes back to Puerto Rico from the U.S. And the U.S. would need those taxes in order to fund and pay for the SSI people in Puerto Rico. Because remember, in Puerto Rico and the U.S. in general, SSI benefits are paid from a general tax, whereas SSDI benefits are paid from a specific Social Security tax, like retirement. Anyway, guys, so if the court decides it, it won't be pro-Puerto Rico getting SSI. If Biden has his way, Puerto Ricans will not get SSI uh, for disability benefits. If uh, the guy wins his suit some way, uh, then obviously Puerto Rico will be able to have SSI benefits or some other thing in between there. You know, they could change it or do something or whatever. All right. Let's go ahead and call these people real quick. We're going to be making this show a little bit shorter because I am swelling right now because of the uh, really bad infection that I have with the, uh, with the, um, I'm sorry, the, uh, I can't even think right now with the uh, poison ivy, but here we go. Uh, I'm going to call this person real quick. You guys know how this works. We call them. It rings. We continue forward. They'll use a fake name, hopefully. Once they say their name, I let them know to use a fake name, and then we'll continue. So here we go, guys, real quick. Um, let me see what I can do to get this on the phone real quick. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott. We are live on YouTube. Remember to use a fake name, and would you like me to answer a specific question, or would you like me to uh, run some hearing questions with you? Um, I had specific questions. Sure. How can I help you? Um, I was calling to ask about the um, adjustment of my uh, my Social Security. It hasn't been reevaluated since I've been on. And um, I had, at that time I was pregnant, I had two little children. I had split my check in half, one to uh, my daughter, one to my son. Now they're both over past 18, even though my daughter went all the way up to like 24 or 25 of me paying her. But all the money from the rest of my check never came back to me. Okay. So real quick, just help me out. Who had what benefits? Did each child get SSI? Did you get SSI? What was the split up? Yes. Okay. So that was the split up. They, I split it off from my check. So wait, so, but aside from the whole split off thing, they had SSI or, because remember SSI isn't really a split off thing. SSI is like a, each person has to have it. Did they have auxiliary benefits where they were, they were tapping off of their parents, you know, paid into social security benefits. Yes. Okay. Yes, they were tapping out for mine. All right. So we got two auxiliary benefits and then you had SSI? Uh, yes, disability. Or did you have SSDI or SSI? Um, so I, my thing says SSI, but I we got it for my disability. How much were you getting per month? Uh, how much am I getting now? $971. 900. All right. So yeah, you're an SSDI or so. Um, okay. So here's a, here's the thing. Um, okay. Uh, they're now adults. They are, I'm assuming not disabled, right? The children are not disabled. My daughter is, but she now, they now, she's now receiving her own check. Is she getting SSI or SS uh, or DAC benefits or a combination of those? Um, I think maybe a combination. How much is she getting per month? Uh, I think she's getting a thousand. Yeah, so she's getting, she's probably getting DAC. But all right, so the first thing you want to check on is essentially, is your daughter daughter getting disabled adult child benefits? Um, disabled adult child benefits are, uh, you know, essentially where they get to tap their parents' benefits so long as they're disabled between 18 and 22. So first. Call the SSA, make sure she's on the DAC benefit train. That way she's getting the maximized benefits that she could. It sounds like she is. Otherwise, she would just be getting around $794. Yeah, she is, because she's 25. And, um, I'm sorry, she's uh, 28. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. All right, so kind of the bottom line here is this. You want to know, can you get more money? Right? That's the whole question. Uh, I'm sorry, can you please repeat that? Yeah, yeah. So you want to know, can you get more money, right, per month? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Because the money should, they told me and they told my daughter's off my, the money should have been coming back to me after she started on for her own case. And then my son, ever since he had turned 18 with no, at that time, no mental problems or whatever, they just stopped that check. So that money never got returned back <laughs> on to me from my account check yet. Period. Gotcha. 
Okay, so, so here's the thing. All right, you're on SSDI benefits. You can't tap into your child claims anymore because they're no longer children, they're adults, which means that they're not essentially going to be receiving funds that you can tap into unless you were their payee. Um, you are only going to be getting SSDI benefits. How old are you currently? Um, I'm 47, and I'm just uh, pretty much totally disabled here. But when they, when they did the Crohn's thing, my evaluation was just my Crohn's. I had many other disorders come to me upon that. Also, you know, uh, going through a lot of trauma and mental things, issues as well. But a lot of more uh, physical things have happened to me. My disease has got worse or things like that. Okay. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Um, you are probably uh, getting essentially what you should be getting because you're getting SSDI okay. benefits. Uh, is the husband uh, still in the picture? Uh, no. Okay. So has he passed away? Is he still alive? Um, my husband, he's still alive. Okay. Um, have his benefits vested? Is he disabled? Um, well, he has a cancer cell. I was considered disabled, but he, um, he works at a chef, uh, most likely a job cooking in Cleveland. All right. So, and here's, here's my point with this. If he's disabled, you could potentially tap into his, uh, you know, uh, benefits as a, as a disabled, well, the, You'd have to look at specifically. How long were you two married? Eight years. I can't remember if it's the two year or if it's the ten year requirement, but it might be ten years. Uh, and you had an actual divorce. Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, I'd have hold on. Let me look up because there's the two programs. I always forget the elements of them. You have the uh, disabled uh, spouse uh, benefits, and then you have the uh, surviving. Uh, individual home. Let me see if I can find the, uh, here we go. Let me see if I can find also, the... what about my parents or any of that stuff? Because like my mother stuff died, her mother stuff, things like that. Well, I mean, you're not going to be able to really tap into your mother's benefits. Um, okay. there, there are unique situations where you can tap into grandparents' benefits or parents' benefits, but that's not your gig. So the elements oh, required. My grandmother too. Yeah. The elements my required. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the elements required for spouses insurance benefits would be married for at least one continuous year to someone who receives social security retirement or disability benefits, be at least 62 years old or caring for a child under 16 or disabled of the retired or disabled worker, which, you know, that's the, or caring for a child that's disabled, uh, under age 16 or disabled, you know, so that there was that potential there and not be getting a higher social security retirement benefit based on your own work. So maybe you could try and do a, tap into that from when, but she's 25 now, but she's disabled. Uh, uh, you know, there's, there's, and then you, what was your age again? Was it 48? Yeah, 47. 47. Okay. Yeah. So the um is be at least 62 years old or caring for a child under age 16 or disabled of the retired or disabled worker. So yeah, I mean, if he's disabled and the kid is disabled, but the kid's older and you're no longer caring for them. So you'd have to try and get you try and tap into it to back to when the child was 17 and the day before 18, or if the child was in high school continuously for an extended period until the child was 22, which is not so far of a stretch. It's only three years. Okay. Well, I don't have children. What was the first one you saw me? You said 18 something. You said the first one, not the shortest. The 18, what do you uh, mean? I think, yeah, I think you're saying 18 and over or something you could tap in, or you said if you were switch or no, you said if I was with my husband for at least a year. Yeah, so basically this is called Social Security Spouses Insurance Benefits. What that is is essentially where you, um, uh, I'm hot, uh, where you go ahead and uh, uh, tap into your spouse's benefits as a disabled person, uh, and that other person is disabled or retired or I think another option is if they passed away, but the bottom line is the benefits should have vested in some way. And, uh, and then of course your benefits would have to be less than what you could potentially get through his benefits. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we try that one. 
try it out. Give him a call. See if you can tap into it to basically go back in time to when your child was. I mean, was your was the daughter who's disabled still in school uh, when she was 22 years old? Yes, because I just stopped paying her when she was 25. Well, actually, she just got it a month ago. So actually, I just stopped paying her like a month, like a almost a month or two ago. So, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. Send me an email because I'm not sure I'm super solid on all the facts here, but send me an email as to when your child received the benefits, when, uh, you know, what the benefits were, when the child was ruled disabled under the Social Security Administration, um, if your husband is currently receiving disability benefits. Um, I don't know if Adon is or not. Okay. I can give you the social you can see. No, I can't look it up unless I have a 1696 sign for him. So a lot of people think I can just access any claim. I can't. I can only access those where I have a 1696 filed, which I prefer it that way too. But um, yeah, no, um, just email me some of the details. I'll look out a little bit more, but it sounds like you're getting what you're supposed to be getting, being SSDI benefits. But maybe you could do some fancy footwork to attach to the child being disabled. But the child, when did the child get her disability benefits again? Um, actually, she just started getting hers. It'll be a total of two months now. Oh, yeah. Okay, so then you're going to have a problem because she wasn't disabled during the time period where you'd have to prove, you know, that you were... Yeah, I mean, she always been dis disabled. She was just getting mind, receiving mind donning, and now she went and got her own case over manager and on her now. All right. Send me the details in an email. I'll take a look at it and see if you can play some chess, essentially, with trying to tap into your ex-husband's benefits. But remember, too, like you're going to have to have you're going to have to be able to. Well, I guess not. You can always call the SSA and just ask them if he's currently receiving. But um, kind of the bottom line is this. Um, I would say just send me an email. and I'll send you something back of things that you can try by calling the SSA to see if you can opt into his benefits. Okay, so send me a text. Can you send me a text with your, the things that you're asking for and also your email address? That way I'll get it back to you. Yeah, let me give you the email right now um, because after this I have to go uh, to get uh, this medicine. But uh, basically it's W. I don't have it in the right way. That's why I was asking if you can go in and hit the button. Okay, then, <laughs> yeah, just shoot me a text message. And then as I'm you know going somewhere, I'll go ahead and shoot you a text message back with the email. Okay. All okay. right. Perfect. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So guys, we're going to do one more phone call because I am getting a little, oh, perfect. So we're going to do one more phone call because I am getting a little bit, uh, a little bit sweaty, but um, either way, uh, let's do one more phone call. Hopefully it'll be a simple and easy one. Of course it won't be. Um, yeah. Uh, Mike Muller, you can totally call in, call in right now. Um, I know it's so bad. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's bad. And that's just the very top of it, which is not bad at all. Like uh, two days ago I was deformed. Like my skin had wrapped on itself and everything did that stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been totally horrific, but I'll do one more phone call and I'm going to go get that stuff. Cause they have this amazing medicine, but I got cheap and I was like, here, here's, give me a call. Um, I got cheap and I didn't buy it. I bought the other medicine which was cheaper. And everybody was like, oh man, this other medicine, the expensive medicine is amazing. But it was like 46 bucks for a cream. And I was like, I know like women know how those prices work with like creams and stuff. Cause they're used to like face creams and special lotions. And I'm a guy that grew up on a farm, you know, like I, you know, if I see a $46 cream, I'm like, that better be magic, you know? But, um, anyways, guys, um, <laughs> We're having a good night. We're having a good night. I'm getting a call. I'm just going to take this one. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott, Disability Resolution PA. Uh, we are live. Remember to use a fake name. Would you like me to answer a specific question, or would you like me to go ahead and run hearing questions with you? Uh, I, I just had a, a thought. There. Yeah. Um, they, uh, years ago when I got my Social Security disability, uh, they gave me a paper. You know how we get different uh, amounts every few years it goes up okay uh, i can't remember what year it was okay. but it it jumped considerably and i'm thinking it's getting around close to that time um 
maybe it was something I wasn't supposed to see. That's why I kind of think all this is kind of planned. All this uh, stuff, you okay. know, everything going up. So, because, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I get 1264. I drove, I pulled chemical tankers yeah. and got hurt. <clears throat> but each each year or every so many years, it went up. And then in a certain year, which I can't remember, it almost doubled. I don't know if that's going to give a bunch of false hope to somebody or not, but uh, there was definitely a year that my social security took a very large jump. And that's the only thing I was wanting to point out. If you want to take another caller, I'll, I'll just click back on the computer and let you. No, you no. You're the last caller, man. I'm, after this, I'm going to go get medicine. <laughs> like, I got to I gotta mail off a bunch of initials and I got to go get medicine. So, no. Um, yeah, you're totally f- um, The reason why you had a cost of living adjustment bump that was bigger was back in 2009. That's when it was a 5.8% increase. In January of 2022, so next year, you're going to have another big bump. It's going to go up to 5.9%. So the biggest year ever for there being an increase in the COLA, the cost of living adjustment, was July of 1980, which was essentially 14.3% increase. Um, July 1979, 9.9%. July 1980, 14.3%. July 1981, 11.2%. It was the 80s that began the ruining of the U.S. dollar. Like if you wanted me to like say when did, when did it hit the fan, it was the 80s. Uh, the next big one was essentially with the 2008 collapse. That's when we saw in 2009 a 5.8% increase. When we saw the 2020 2021 collapse, now 2022, we're seeing a 5.9% increase. We will see likely a hardly any increase in 2023 because the government will try to restrict how much COLA increase the people will get, which screws them over. And then they'll basically be going ahead and saying, oh, you're only getting a 0% increase. That's what they always do now. Whenever there's a financial wreck, they do an increase the next year. And then the next year after that, they give them pretty much nothing. So anyways, uh, I guess my, my point to you would be this. Yes, you're absolutely right. It's going to be coming soon. You will be receiving it when you get your first check for 2022 in January for 5.9% of an increase. I need a whole lot, to be honest with you. Not with everything else going on. Uh, um, you should look at it. Hey, your show. Yeah. Uh, I'm here in West Virginia. I don't know what I'm um, But what I've seen, I think, is different than what you're talking about. Um, I, like I said, it went from 1200 1300 to... Uh, you know, it kept going up just a little bit, little. And then I uh, can't remember what year it was. It took a big jump. It was, it was two thousand dollars, and I was like, "That's legit." I go, "What?" And she goes, "That's your how they you know, they'll be paying you over the years." And I go, "Well, can I start here and work backwards because it was like two grand?" And she goes, "No, well, you probably got a back pay or something. There's no boost like that. I mean, there's a cola increase." Well, it was a, no, that wasn't back there, sir. No. Um, but, yeah, I think something maybe I shouldn't have seen. <laughs> yeah. But, but you go. Yeah. I'm going to turn you on the computer, and uh, maybe you can get another color in. Oh, I'm, I'm going I'm gonna to go get medicine. But thank you so much, good sir. You have a wonderful, wonderful night. All right. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. So, yeah, guys, basically, I'm going to go get some medicine. I have poison ivy here on the back of my ears. I have it on the bottom of my wrists, but the really bad stuff is by my stomach. And basically I know it's getting better. Sherry Segretti and also Leanne and Leanne's been with me forever with this channel. I mean, like there was dinosaurs and unicorns and she was there when they were born on this earth, when the channel was created a thousand years ago. So I just want to say, uh, Leanne, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sherry Segretti. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go get those meds. Um, but I've never seen poison ivy like this. Uh, the nurse had a picture and they were like, this is really interesting. And when you hear a medical professional say that, you know what I mean? It's like, oh God, you know? And uh, so anyways, uh, I hope you guys are doing really, really well. Um, yeah, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be in the Prius literally driving over to go get that. 
Um, but uh, I, I really appreciate you guys being part of this channel, and I hope this channel helps people. I two and a half hours before I went live, there was a guy who posted this two paragraph thing about he, how he hated me, how he said I was evil, how he said I was, and he had watched the top fifty uh, trick ALJ questions, and on like the fiftieth video, he was like, he wrote this two paragraph thing, and he was like, you're a narcissistic evil person. And I was just like, dude, if you're writing two paragraphs that you're going to drop on me about how evil I am, like that's the definition of being a narcissistic person. When you got to dump on people after using their education that they have student loans on eight years of starting their own law firm and working for two other law firms. But anyway, and then, and then there was the other guy. That one didn't hurt me. That one didn't hurt me. But the one that hurt me was when he basically they closed at 10. Oh, I got to go. Yeah. The other one that hurt me was when the guy made fun of my front teeth because he's like, you have two huge giant front teeth. What's wrong with you? Why are you such a freak? And all I could think of was, I don't know, maybe I'm genetically related to a beaver. What, but that, it doesn't matter. Anyways, guys, I will catch you later. Have an absolutely wonderful day. I thank you so much. Lisa Burnett, thank you. Thank you. Another person that's been with us for a while. Um, I'm going to go buy that special medication, even though Walgreens kills me with the price of it. But here we go. I will catch you later. And please, guys, look up logos. Look up logos that you like. I, I need, you got to feed, I can design them. Fireworks, Photoshop, After Effects, I can design them digitally. I can create them. I can even make them kind of 3D-ish. But you got to send me ideas because my brain is, aside from the problem I'm having right now, is very, yeah. So, guys, I will catch you later. Have a wonderful night. And uh, please, everybody, pick a logo that you like. And if you can, email it to me, wrh at disabilityresolution.com. If you can't, just have it prepped on your computer somewhere, and I'll show you how to share it with everybody. Let's figure it out because I'm all for this nonprofit. The disabled have gotten screwed their entire life. Here we go. Walter, goodbye. Yes, thank you. I'll catch you later. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye, guys.